Hey guys, Mike here. So, but what a day in the market yesterday. All time highs for the SP once again, but boy, Tesla did not join the party. Double digits drop on the Robo Taxi event. We'll go into what they released. If you didn't see it, it's pretty cool. We'll talk about that. Also, why they dumped the 10% and where it stopped, which is very crucial because there's a big range. If you don't know about it, I'll let you know about it. Uh, and then I'm also going to rant about just how far freaking behind we are because, you know, we, we see that Robotax event. Everybody's just in awe if you're living in America, but it, other people from other countries just look at that and just laugh. And I'll show you exactly why and what I'm talking about. And then, of course, we'll get into a lot of your questions, which were really good questions. Uh, some about certain stocks uh, and something about a certain bill that is still has a lot of liquidity to inject in the american system here okay it's still yet to be uh put out there so going into it real quick and feel free to participate in the comments on these you can see right here you know the same kind of stuff he's at the studios and hey look at this right here here's the robo taxi if i'm not mistaken when i read about this and heard him talk about it it's a two-seater don't really understand that at all why you would do that and then here's the van which is pretty cool by the way is it just me or do you think of iron man when you see this could be just me but that looks just like the iron man mask i don't know but again, so it's like 20 people. Looks really cool. Again, you know, I'll show you something that, you know, you look at this kind of go, okay, that's neat, neat. That's very neat. But other countries have already rolled out stuff like this. So we're a little bit behind on this one. And then when you sit there and look over at this one, I think this is the coolest one to me. It's the robots, right? I mean, I'd have one. He says it's going to be anywhere from thirty to 40000 I mean, it gives you another reason to be lazy in your house and kind of have you a maid that goes all over the place and, you know, picks up your groceries and does this and does that and plays with you. And I don't know. It was kind of cool. But, you know, the bottom line is this. The stock drops 10%. Now, here's a key factor, a couple of key factors. Where did it stop? Right there on that trend line. Okay, that trend line right there is not the logarithmic trend line. That's the one I've had on there for a long time, right? the if we hit the logarithm if we can take this channel off because it's done with that channel and I, uh, i'm going to go into a lot of stuff on this chart right here real quick this is the logarithmic one right that little trend line was coming down we had so much data so i had two different ones on here for you to track and when you look at it obviously fell through that and then when we come down here you can see where it hit which is the normal one okay that's where it bounced to the penny on that so that's you know a good thing that held there of course being down 10 percent, and it did recover it went down to like 214 recovered 223 sold down to 217 i believe but when you look at all the moving average what else did it hit it's closed above the 100 moving average which is a good thing right 50 is right above it that confluence here remember we talked about that 200 moving average support trend line channel fair value gap i said if it drops below that boom right and it definitely that's what happened they set it up perfectly yesterday or friday i'm saying thursday's video we talked about that up in that channel but again looking at the range here below us we have the 200 day moving average which is very critical and one of the i think is the 50 week moving average i'm not mistaken but when you pull up the volume profile you can see what happened there's that gap that's the gap we blew up through remember when i said oh we're going 235 no problem and we blew right into it and we fell right back through it. I don't know what it is about that area right there throughout history for Tesla. Between 232 Friday, it just absolutely plummets or it skyrockets, whatever. But anyway, when you look at it, we hit support, okay? But if we lose this right here, if we lose like 215-ish, you can see another volume gap, right? What's going to catch us? The 200 moving average down to 200. So you have this big range, all right, in that gap between 200 to 215 bucks. You lose 215, you got a chance to fall all the way down to 200 again. So just keep that in mind when it comes to Tesla. Again, it can move right back up through this gap. I don't know what the catalyst is going to be, right? If the option market is going to wake up or whatever, now that NVIDIA is, you know, seems to be wanting to pump pretty hard. But that could happen. But again, you have a big range, anywhere from 200 and 235, somewhere to play with, which I know a lot of people with DCNN, all that fun stuff. You know, but I just want you to know about that. And of course, who was the beneficiary? Do you notice? Uber, up 10% on the day, actually 11% on the day, because why? They don't have any competition now because of the dates he put out. Everybody was like, oh, man, this thing's going to roll out really quick. It's going to roll out really quick. And then here comes Lyft. Lyft's like, oh, thank you. I'll, I'll partake in this as well. Thank you so much. I'll be up 10% because there is no competition. And remember, I talked about this. Everybody was talking about, oh, it's going to roll out quickly. And I said, guys, maybe in China, it's it kind of rolls out. And the dates he gave was for the RoboTaxi to start production in 2026. Hopefully have it out in 2026, maybe 2027. No timeline on the little van thing. Uh, the robots, you know, again, this is way off, and that's why it dropped because Wall Street's saying, Where's the money? We need to see the money. Okay. You want to be a tech company? Put something out tech. Okay. Quit putting out cars. All right. That, that right there is a lot of money in RoboTaxis. The robot, a lot of money. It's great. It looks cool. It's futuristic. Love the way it looks. But you got to execute it and get it out there. 
Start giving us some money to put to the balance sheet and the income statement. Let's see this stuff, right? And so when they had them at 265, going to 300, supposedly, it was a tech company. Every time they go, oh, it's still a car company with a lot of cool toys, they drive it back down, right? Because that's just what it is. And so, you know, got to roll the stuff out, man. You can't just be promising on stuff. And it's great to have these cool looking toys. You got to get them out there. Get them doing stuff. Like where? Europe. China, Japan, all these other countries. I mean, look at this right here. You, and, and Americans see that, including me, right? But a lot of Americans have never been outside of America before. All they do is listen to mainstream media and our government saying how great we are at everything, how much better we are at everything than every other country in the world, right? Because they've never experienced any other country out there. You know, it's one good thing about joining the military. You know, that's what I did. So I can so see the world and you can see this stuff for yourself. But it's amazing when it comes to like, Weapons for war? Well, yeah, we're, we're well ahead of everybody else, I think, for sure. When it comes to maybe even like, I don't know, coding or whatever. Great. But when it comes to like, especially transportation, any kind of technology to do with that, man, I think we're so far behind because remember here, it's all about the red tape. All about the red tape. All right. We're he's just talking about rolling out in Texas, I think it was, full autonomous driving for the cars themselves, not the robo taxi, right? But you look at this. This is, and I got videos from Europeans and Americans that have been to other countries, okay? And some of these are two or three years old. All right. So look how far ahead they are when it comes to us. They already have buses like this. Look at this. This is a fully autonomous bus. You're going to see this guy. He's from, I believe he's from England, if I'm not mistaken. You know, but that's what it looks like. It looks familiar, right? But, you know, he gets in this thing and, and they start riding and stuff. And this is from two years ago. Okay. And they've been working on this for six years, right? And you can see, I'm going to fast forward here, they take off driving. It's like, okay, cool. They're in the bus. This is what it looks like. You step in, you do your thing. This is a smaller version of this, but you can see there's no drivers. He's on the bus. Cool. It's driving. And that's sitting there. I believe that's in China, if I'm not mistaken. Look at this one. This is a fully sized bus. And it's ain't automation, full automation, but it's the same way what we're trying to do here with our EV cars, right? Where the bus driver like, is actually driving itself, right? The bus driver lets go, it starts driving itself, and the video goes on for like 10 minutes, right? It shows how, how it parks itself, the bus driver gets out, it parks itself, all that crazy stuff. And that's a full size freaking bus right there. Then you go over to this one, right? Look at this. These, some of these countries have automated, you know, street sweepers, construction equipment, like all kinds of stuff going on there. You know, look at this one right here. This is uh, construction equipment, by the way. Look at this one. Now, all of this is fully automated. This does it itself. I mean, why don't we have it here? I, well, I mean, I could tell you, but I mean, I think you know why. But I mean, look at this. It's like, why not? And so we get all excited about what we saw he, him roll out. It looks cool. I mean, the robots are freaking awesome as far as I'm concerned. But when it comes to automated stuff, man, we're, we're so far behind, dude. I mean, it ain't even funny. And if you are from another country or been to other countries, you know what I'm talking about. You see these bullet trains. I mean, it's unbelievable what they have. Again, we still have Amtrak and Greyhound. You know, eh. and by the way, a lot of that public transportation, these bullet trains, and all these other kind of trains and stuff that are rolled out, it's free. You don't have to pay for it, man. We got to pay a mint right here if you want to take the Amtrak or, or, or the, the Greyhound. It's amazing what they charge you for that junky kind of transportation. But anyway, I'll start. I'll stop on that rant. Let me know if you have a different opinion on that. Now, uh, first question here comes from Andrew. He says, any idea how much infrastructure money is still on the sidelines? I had a theory they were releasing as much because inflation or weren't releasing as much because of inflation but i've seen headlines over the last few weeks more coming out this is true what happens when we get a new president do they need to spend it all before year in the answer is no or do they roll that remaining money over to the next president yes asking to think through the impact of infrastructure stocks and what it is they, they haven't spent even half the money okay this is at the end of may right here so going into june they haven't even spent half of it and so we go through here and we'll just kind of break this down what we're talking about here you can see this brief uh, halfway through the five year infrastructure investment jobs act less than half 38 percent of the funding has been announced according to the white house so again there there are releasing more over the past six months you've seen that but remember this is america right so it takes a lot of red tape a lot of different approvals all kinds of stuff and a lot of this if you look at it has been slated for bridges and roads and wi-fi and all this kind of crazy stuff right and so that has to go through all kinds of approval just to get just to break ground just to put shovels in the ground it's ridiculous how much it takes by the way and if you're in the business you know this and so when i looked at it i don't think the money has to be spent until like 2026 because as you pass this as a law it's called the infrastructure law or something and this was passed by congress they have the purse signed by the president okay so it should just pass over to the next president right as they go through this so again for me when i'm looking at this kind of like you are 
this is just more money, liquidity that to, needs to go out. And trust me, I think they're not holding back on this money because of because of inflation. That would be responsible. These people are not responsible, and you know that as much as I do. Okay, so I think there's a reason. Didn't Caterpillar hit a new two week high uh, yesterday? If I'm not mistaken, on Friday. And so, no, they're not doing it because of responsibility or try to hold down inflation. That's no way. All right. They would, they would never pass it if that was the case. But no, it's just more liquidity waiting to go. So plenty of, you know, looking. I don't know if you can go look what the projects are, like what companies are getting the contracts. That would probably be smart, something probably uh, smart to do, right? Who, who's getting these bids and these contracts? But CAT seems to be a pretty big winner out of, if I'm not mistaken. So good question on that. Uh, next one here, and just a timely question as well. Is in phase the last remaining relatively cheap slash safe slash high reward and low risk play and left in this market long term? I don't know about long term for you there, doctor, but I can tell you this right here. You asked it just at the right time because what is in phase doing? It's coming right down in that shaded area once again. And every time it comes down to this shaded area since the end of 2023, you've gotten a nice bounce. And so it just hit this on Thursday. And then what happened Friday? It popped on Friday. Now looking at this, is it starting to lose steam here? And we take that area away because these pops are getting you know smaller and smaller and smaller. Yes, right. This is um, happening. So again, though, if you can get a pop from 100 to 120, 125, that's pretty dang good. If you get up to 138, I mean that's even icing on the cake for yourself. And again, this is a momentum stock. A lot of people when it starts getting in this area, they start selling cash cured puts, right? Collecting the premium. Okay, if it comes down enough to where their put is, they'll end up getting a sign. But they're hoping for this big bounce so they can close out that cash cure put relatively quickly. Uh, I know a lot of people that do this. And so that's another way to play it instead of just buying the straight up shares or a straight up call or something like that. But again, uh, what was it? So you still, and, and again, yeah, can it still drop? Yes. If it goes down the bottom of that channel, that to me is a great stop loss area, right? It's about 7% from where it's at now. Okay. And this is momentum stock. So what I would do if I'm you, again, no, not advice or anything. But pull up a stochastic RSI, pull up the RSI, pull up the MACD, whatever it is, and see what's happening. See if you can see a trend here. And you usually will, right? Because you got the bullish uh, stochastic RSI cross on the daily. But again, are bulls in charge? No. Like bears are still in charge of this one. But usually when it crosses that uh, moving average in the RSI right there, you get a nice uh, move up for sure. And so, again, there's a couple ways to play this. Uh, let me know what you think. Now, as far as long term, I'll let somebody else speak about that. I don't study this company or anything. I just like the chart when it comes down to the shaded area to play it to the upside because it's a good risk reward right there, uh, especially if you're selling options. So that's just what I would, that's what I think. So anyway, let me know what you think about that. Uh, another one from Dr. Marks here says, hey, uh, Mike, if someone believes in Tesla coin, NVIDIA long term for two to five years, besides the expense fee slash management fee, wouldn't buy and leverage plays like TSLL, CONL, NVDL be no brainer? Just wondering. And are you missing something? I'm going to read this so you can pause it and read this. This is the number one answer you'll get on this question pretty much every time right here. And you can see leverage ETFs decay due to the compounding effect of daily returns, volatility of the market, and the cost of leverage. The volatility drag on leverage ETFs means that losses in the ETF can be magnified over time and they are not suitable for long-term investments. So pause that, read that. That's the number one answer you will get. For sure, uh, no brainer on that one. But I will say this, if you know there's going to be an uptrend, I know plenty of people, I've done it myself, buy leverage ETFs, but you don't hold them long term because you do not want to be in a leverage ETF during a drawdown. If you don't believe me, look at Tesla. Go pull up TSLL and see how far that thing is down. And another thing is, it's hard to stomach, right? You open that portfolio up and in one day, one investment is down 17%, or actually it was down 20, TSLL was, when you opened up on Friday, right? And you're like, oh my goodness. And if you look, it's down, I think, I think it's down like what, 35, 40% over the last week and a half because what's Tesla been doing? It's been in a drawdown, okay? And so you'll lose, if you got those gains, you'll lose them fast in, in a drawdown. The other thing you will see is if somebody, one of our members pointed this out on like TNA, which is the triple leverage ETF for IWM. And you'll see this, right? And it has to do with a lot of that definition I just read you. All of a sudden, IWM, IWM will be up 2%. And you're like, whew, my TNA got to be up 6%. And you'll look, and TNA is up like 4 And you're like, well, that's only 2X. What's going on? And it has a lot to do with what I just read you on that definition, right? So you get out of balance and stuff. So it's not always like that. And if you notice, what do all leverage ETFs have to do? They all have to do reverse stock splits. <laughs> they all have to do reverse stock splits, right? And you'll see that with TSLL. If Tesla or whatever goes into a major drawdown, Right, because it's already at nine bucks. It started IPO. It uh, came out. I'm sorry, not IPO, but it came out at twenty five. That thing starts getting down into you know five, four, three dollar range. They'll probably do a reverse stock split so they can keep it listed. And the thing is, there's so many of them now. 
it, you know, low volume. And I mean, they got one for, it's like they got one and a half, two X, three X. I think they even have a four X for some of these. It's crazy. I mean, they're rolling out on these things, but you know, do what you want to do. I would never hold these things like long term uh, for sure. But if you know you're going into an uptrend, uh, they can be your best friend for sure. Okay. Just be careful on the drawdown if you can stomach. All right. Now, and last one here says, uh, can you explain how, why fair value gaps are an imbalance between buyers and sellers? Uh, yes, I can, Brian. And basically, I mean, it, literally, I don't know if you ever Google this or not, but if you look right here, you can see uh, fair value gaps considered an imbalance between buyer and seller because it represents a significant price movement on a chart where buying or selling pressures was so strong they created a gap, indicating a disparity between the number of buyers and sell orders at the price level, essentially signifying that one side of the market, buyers or sellers, was significantly more active. Prime example was on Friday. You see it every day. But I'll show you this right here. This is uh, ES, for example. See those three candles? All you do looking at it is looking at the wick, the candle above it and below it and see what part of the body is not covered, right? And so there is one right there and then you look down below it, there is another one. And I'm drawing this out for a reason so you can see how the market just basically searches these things out. All of them don't have to get mitigated, but a lot of them do, especially on a daily basis, right? So you have three right in a row because what happened? Huge up push, okay, of buyers, not sellers. So you create these imbalances. What happens as the market comes down, you can see when we go through this, that right there, I'm sorry, right here to the penny, end up coming down, mitigating that fair value gap, started to suck up, right? Then started to sell back off, came down, did what? Mitigated the next fair value gap, right? Got a nice rebound, push up, came down right here, did what? I almost mitigated that one fully. And then of course bounced up and then away we went. And you'll see many other these fair value gaps along the way, right? You see that one came down, there's a fair value gap to the penny boom bounced and went right some of them to the penny some of them get about 50 percent of them mitigated but this is what happens okay all day long this is what happens it's nothing but you know searching for liquidity and everything else and this is where they can help you out and not all fair value gaps create equal there are hundreds of videos on this stuff so make sure you watch that and everything before you start using them that is for sure because again it's a whole different uh, ball game but that's what fair value gaps are hopefully that makes sense uh, and so again, appreciate all the questions. Let me know what you think about Tesla. Again, I would have one of those robots in my house. Would you have one of them? That, that would I'd be curious about. It does remind me of iRobot with Will Smith. <laughs> so hopefully that's not how it would turn out. But yeah, I think it's a pretty cool thing. But again, you just you have to start rolling out products and making revenue. That's that's what Wall Street wants right now. Okay. Uh, and so until that, they'll just be valued like a in a way like a car company. That's a has a lot of cool tech toys that just hadn't quite rolled them out yet. That kind of stuff. You know, it upsets people to hear that, but that's kind of where we're at on that. So anyway, hope you guys got some out of it. Please hit that like subscribe button for sure. Let me know if you're actually getting notifications because YouTube told me there was a problem and everything with that. And so I just want to see what's going on. Think about sharing the video. If you want to sign up for the membership, feel free to do that. Less than McDonald's combo. And I will see you guys tomorrow to set up the week, which is going to be a fun one. Okay. See you later.